was in high school, my two closest friends were Colin and Eric. They were both tallish, skinny guys. I was a small young woman who, as a 16-year-old, could pass for 13. One night we went for a walk. Well, I was walking and the two guys were rollerblading slowly along. To get to my home, we went through the middle school parking lot. The lot was at the front of the school and a row of trees separated the lot and the road. Just as we entered the lot, conversation broke as Eric and Colin decided to race to the end. They took off. As I was walking, a car pulled into the lot and slowly drove up beside me. It was about 10 o'clock at night, but the lights on the front of the school meant I could see the car pretty clearly. It was navy blue and its black windows were tinted dark. There were no decals or anything on it, nothing that said security or neighborhood watch. The driver was a Caucasian man, probably in his late 20s. He didn't look overweight, but his face was wide and looked a bit swollen or something. He was wearing a red shirt, no uniform. He rolled down his window and spoke to me. Hey, you're not allowed to be here, you're trespassing. I was confused. I stopped walking and took a small step toward the car to hear him better. Uh, par pardon me? I'm going to have to take you downtown, get in the car. Now, it was pretty clear this guy wasn't security or a cop so I immediately put more distance between myself and the car. In a loud, firm voice, I said, No. The driver looked confused at that. I glanced towards the end of the parking lot. Eric and Colin had seen the car and were skating back quickly. He tried again. You're in a lot of trouble. Get in the car. No. At that moment, Colin and Eric reached me. I think one of them asked the driver who he is. The guy didn't say a word and just pulled away quickly. We all three discussed how creepy that was as we continued our walk. When I got home and said goodbye to the guys, I went inside and told my mom about the incident. She thought I was overreacting. I found the non-emergency number for police and gave them a call. They told me that the middle school did have a security officer there, that there was no reason that he would have had any right to ask me to get inside of his car. I have grapheme to color synesthesia, which gives me a very good memory for numbers and letters. I remembered the driver's license plate and told the police, but I'm not sure if anything came of it. I moved into a large studio apartment complex a few months ago. I am a single female with a two-year-old daughter. My sister and a few of her friends came over about three weeks ago to hang out, have some beers, and play cards against humanity. My studio has an enclosed patio, save for a door size opening, no gate or door. Since my child was sleeping, I had everyone chill outside on the patio. We were having a great time, joking, talking, and listening to low playing music when the security guard entered my patio. Hi there, uh, are we being too loud? Has someone placed a complaint? No, no, you guys are fine, just doing my rounds. He lingered for a minute more, then strolled out into the night. We continued our activities and didn't really give him a second thought. He returned about 25 minutes later, right after most of the group had left. Only my sister, her friend Cody, and I remained. He was an overweight, late 40s to early 50s white male and wore glasses. He strolls into my patio once again and strikes up conversation. We learned he is a retired cop that had quit the force after suffering a heart attack on duty. He states he had to undergo a quintuple bypass surgery and after recovery, he started night security jobs. I felt sorry for him because of his medical history and sat and listened to him for quite a while. He must have stayed at least 30 minutes before my sister got uncomfortable and loudly announced that we were going to bed. He bid us good night and left. Once again, my sister said that she didn't like the way that he was looking at me and she thought that he took a liking to me. I initially told her she was reading into it too much and that the dude was just lonely and had a long shift ahead. A week and a half later, my sister is visiting again and we are sitting inside my place talking. My studio has a black screen door, which is visible to see through, and a wood door. I had the screen locked and the wood door wide open to let some air in. My sister is talking to me and I have the sensation that someone is looking at me, so I glance up. The security guard is standing at the doorway of my patio, staring. I say hello and he jerks forward, as if expecting an invitation in or something. But I turn my attention back to my sister, and when I glance back again, he's gone. This week on Tuesday, I took a shower and threw on my red silk Japanese-style robe. 
I was washing dishes for about 25 minutes and had poured a glass of wine. I turned from the kitchen to sit on my couch and I strangled a scream. The security guard is almost pressed up against my screen door, staring straight at me through the foot-long crack of the wooden door. I was so startled and shaken, but the first thing I did was make sure my robe wasn't exposing me. I ran up to the screen. You, what are you doing? You scared me. No emotion and no apology. I was just doing my rounds. My scalp is crawling and I'm still shaky. Okay, well... I'm going to bed now. He is still right up next to the screen door, all the way inside my patio, and turns and looks at my beach cruiser parked against the wall. Oh, you have a bike? You should put that inside because someone could take it. Yeah, I'll get to it. I pretty much slam the door shut and lock the door. I sit down with the wine and calm my nerves. I was shaken up but wasn't sure if he really was being a creeper or just a lonely individual that was looking for someone that had expressed interest. After a debate with my friends and sister, I contacted the property manager. I was actually surprised at how quickly it escalated. They took my verbal incident report over the phone and just informed me today that the guy has been fired. The property manager told me to call the police if I see him on my premises again. At the time of this story, I was 20 years old. I'm 27 now, and I should also mention that I'm a female. I was working part-time in the cosmetic department at a drugstore, working mostly evenings, being a student and all. I was never overly afraid of being there at night. It wasn't a bad neighborhood at all, middle upper class, and there were always at least four people working in the store at a time. However, regardless of the neighborhood we were in, Idiots will be idiots and the theft rate in our store was at an all-time high and it was usually targeted in the evenings. This company was a fantastic company to work for and they genuinely cared about our safety and of course the products that were going to go missing so they hired a security company to help cover the store in the evenings, mostly the cosmetic department. I should also mention that although there were always other employees in the store, the cosmetics department is pretty secluded and there was only ever one employee, usually a female, scheduled in the department at a time. Because of this, the company of a security guard was definitely welcome to help pass the time on a long quiet night. I worked four evenings a week and another girl covered the other evenings and it was for the most part the same schedule each week. There were a few different guards that would come to our store but on most occasions it was only this one male, I'd guess around 25 years old not unattractive and very friendly. We'll call him Mike. Mike would often come in his uniform and post at our counter and basically scare away potential thieves by doing just that. Quite often we would chit chat and pass the time having idle conversation. I am very talkative, pretty much an open book and sometimes too forthcoming with personal information. I began noticing that on my shifts it was only ever Mike on duty and asked him about it to which he replied, yeah, you're just stuck with me now. Everyone else has other postings. That was entirely possible, and I didn't think much of it. That is, until I went into my store on one of my nights off to pick something up and saw that there was a different guard there with the other evening employee, and we'll call her Sarah. I said hello to Sarah and the other guard and said, Oh, it must be Mike's night off. To which the other guard replied, Mike only works Sunday through Wednesday. Well, that caused a little lump in my throat. That was my exact schedule. It has to be a coincidence, right? Twenty-year-old naive me thought so. On with my life I went, not worried about a thing. Things that followed were a series of minor creepy encounters with Mike. Running into him at the movie theater in my town when I knew from previous conversations that he lived in the town 20 minutes away, which had its own theater with the same showings. Having him show up at my work on a day that I took an extra shift, in uniform, claiming he was on his lunch break and now gets his prescriptions at my store instead of the one near his house due to better services. I asked the pharmacy tech if he had a prescription filled, and she said no. The next thing still gives me the chills, not in a good way, and is when I started being not so friendly to this guy. I also want to make it clear that on many occasions while having conversations with Mike, I had mentioned my awesome boyfriend. There is no way he thought I could have been available or interested in him. 
After a vacation that Mike took with some friends, he was back to working the same shifts as me at the drugstore and I was remaining neutral towards him, still having conversation to pass the time. He asked if I'd like to see some photos that he had taken from his vacation. It was a road trip, so he had a ton of scenery pictures, etc. I said sure and took his phone from him. He said, just keep swiping left to see all the pics. So I'm scrolling through, and one swipe too many, and I'm looking at a full-blown wiener pic. Of course, I kind of jump, stutter a bit, and say, Oh, whoops, I, I think I went a bit too far there. And pass the phone back to him, thinking it's a total accident, and he clearly sent that to a girlfriend or something. Except he isn't embarrassed at all. He replies with, huh, I was hoping you'd see that. And the creepiest grin I had ever seen. Chills again just typing this. I was all of a sudden very busy and didn't have time for chit chat that evening. The next morning I placed a call to the company he worked for and explained to them that I thought he might have a crush on me and I was feeling slightly uncomfortable. I told them I didn't want to cause a scene and was hoping they could just change his location or at the very least his schedule. I sometimes have too much compassion and didn't want to get him in trouble and was worried that maybe he thought that I would like his picture for some reason and that it was my mistake. Like I said, sometimes I overshare and maybe he got the wrong idea. I was thrilled the next night when I went in and there was another security guard at the store. I was grateful that a supervisor had listened to my concerns. However, when myself and the rest of the closing crew locked up for the evening, we heard a car engine start up just as we left the store. When I looked for where the sound was coming from, it was in the corner of the mall parking lot which was completely empty and dark and I felt a knot form in my stomach when it was the same vehicle that Mike drove. I had seen him pull up multiple times at the front of our store by the cosmetics department. Although I couldn't quite make out the exact color of the car, I was convinced it was the same. I was trying so hard to convince myself it was just someone with the same vehicle also closing up for the night. The car drove out of the parking lot which made me feel better. When I got to my car, I noticed a note under my wiper. It read, I'm so sad that my location got changed. We'll try to come back to your store as soon as I can. In the meantime, let's get together. With his phone number. I am basically puking in my mouth from nerves at this point. I jump into my car and get out of there as fast as I can. The next day I call Mike's supervisor again. This time I told him the whole story and asked to relay the message that I am not interested and to please leave me alone. I also told my store manager who was a pretty awesome guy who responded with a livid response and placed a call to the supervisor as well, asking that Mike be advised not to step foot back on our store premises. I didn't see or hear from Mike for a few weeks after that. I thought I was in the clear. I hadn't told my boyfriend anything at this point. It was a fairly new relationship and I didn't want him to be weirded out by it. Weeks later, I am barely thinking about Mike and his forceful advances when it is a very rainy evening and I am at work setting up a new fall collection. When it's raining and dark, it's very hard to see out into the parking lot of the store. Basically all you can see is the windows and the reflection of yourself in the store. I was over by the windows, bent over, putting some things on the bottom shelf when a car honked outside the window. Of course I look up to see what was happening, and as I did, over my shoulder in the reflection of the store, I could see Mike standing behind me just standing and staring. I think I jumped a little, probably peed a bit. I tried not to make like I even saw him, although I'm sure he knew I did and I hustled to the other side of the store where the same manager who I told the story to was working. When I told the manager, he ran back to the cosmetics department but Mike was gone. We later watched the whole thing on camera. That evening, my manager placed a very angry call once again to Mike's supervisor, who told us Mike had quit the week before after having told to stay away from our store. Yikes. You may be wondering why no one called the police at this point, but honestly, it just didn't seem dangerous enough. No one was getting hurt. It was just kind of creepy. That is, until... I had finally told my boyfriend about it to my parents and I stopped driving myself to work. I had developed a bit of fear going to my car alone at night. Therefore, either my boyfriend or mom or dad were driving me and picking me up from work. Except this one night, 
My parents were out of town and my boyfriend had a thing to go to this particular Sunday evening, so I drove myself. After closing time, I said my goodbyes to my co-workers and walked to my car at the end of the parking lot. The parking lot has a river at the end of it with some benches overlooking the river with zero lights at nighttime. The only lights are the ones shining from the middle of the parking lot. I know, super safe spot to park, right? In my defense, the parking lot was always completely full when I got to work. So I'm walking to my car and I see nothing and then I hear someone speaking. I immediately recognize it as Mike's voice. He says something like, Why would you do this to me? Why would you make me believe you wanted me? We had so much fun together. As luck would have it, the pharmacist that had closed with me that night wasn't yet in his car as he took the garbage around the side of the building to the bin. I yelled, J Jim, wait up a second, and hightailed it over to his vehicle where I said probably a little too loudly, Call 911. The police arrived and scoured the area for Mike, who was gone without a trace. I never saw him again, and I'm thankful I never had to face whatever he had planned for me that night. I'm a 16-year-old girl from Colorado. This encounter took place earlier today and I thought it was creepy enough to share. There's been a lot of talk about cops and officers of the law abusing their power, and I am not one to claim that all police officers are horrible people, but this definitely challenged my perspective. I was at a retail store, popular enough to remain unnamed with my mom, brother, and grandmother. I had dropped them off in front of the store and left to park. Walking into the entrance, they were nowhere to be found. I assumed that they were already shopping without me. As you walk into the entrance of the store, there are usually two or three claw machines against the wall next to the shopping carts. I love claw machines. I know, it's pretty lame. As I was beginning to put my first of seven dollars into the machine, I could see the reflection of a man approaching me through the glass of the game. I'm quite an awkward person, so any unexpected human interaction makes me jump a little bit. I turned around to see the security guard. He was a young white male, probably in his early 20s. I hadn't even entered the store at this point, so I was confused as to why he was coming up to me. I couldn't have stolen something or done anything wrong. You'll be the first one of the day to win, he said, chuckling a little bit and winking at me. I gave a nervous giggle and turned back to play the game. What's your name? He asked me, taking a step closer. In a panic, I gave him my real name. He was a cop, so why shouldn't I have? After a few moments of awkward conversing and unwanted compliments about my appearance, I decided to leave the machine and start into the store. Do you ever get the feeling where you can literally feel eyes scanning you up and down? Yeah, that was me. I turned to see him as I walked off, and he looked absolutely angry. Okay, weird, I thought, but I figured it wasn't a big deal. Okay, so here's where the story gets creepy. I walked around the entire store at least three times. Every three to five minutes I turned around and see the same security officer as if he were following me. Of course it could have been a coincidence. That was until what happened next. I caught him, filming me. I can't even remember which aisle it happened in. I was looking for glycerin and gelatin for a special effects project when I heard a lady yelling. I spun around to find the security officer with his phone pointed at me and a lady apparently caught him filming me. As soon as him and I made eye contact, he walked away. I looked at the lady who called him out and she told me what she saw. She told me that he was filming me and the video was about 10 minutes long. I didn't know how to react to this as she walked past me to continue shopping. I didn't see much of him after that. We left the store soon after, but not until I played another couple of rounds of the claw machine. About an hour ago, I got a text from a phone number I didn't know. As I opened it, I almost peed myself. It was the video of me taken earlier today. I blocked the number after showing it to my parents. We reported the number, but nothing has been discovered yet. I have no idea why he sent that video recording of me, or how he got my number but I'm never going back to find out. The 
This happened to me when I was 19, which would have been in 2003. I was born and raised in a small town, and I was pretty sheltered throughout my childhood and teenage years. I was always warned about stranger danger, but had never really been in a bad situation before. That is, until this happened. After high school, my best friend Jennifer moved to Los Angeles to attend USC. I would say that at this point in my life, I have never been to a truly large city before. So when I went to visit her, it was a bit of a culture shock for me, especially things like the subway, bus, and train systems. Everyone seemed to know exactly where they were going with no help from anyone, and it was overwhelming to me. Luckily, I made it to her dorm okay from the airport. I stayed for a week or so, and we had a great visit. Jennifer and I were always together, which made navigating public transit fairly easy and comfortable. However, on the day I was heading back to the airport, she had to work. I didn't want her to worry and I felt fairly comfortable after riding the bus and subway throughout the week. I said my goodbyes and managed to get on the train to the airport. The first stretch of my trip to the airport went fine. I think I had even printed off directions. In case you've never used the LA train system, it travels through a lot of smaller neighborhoods before it hits more recognizable, typical, this way to airport signs. At some point I became convinced that I was going the wrong way that I had no idea where I was, that I was going to miss my plane, and I began to panic. I got off at the next stop and found the map of the transit lines, studying them like they were written in Greek. That's when he came up to me. Now when I think about what he looked like, it's a blur. He was big, that I remembered, and had 100 pounds on me easy. But he was a security guard, and he was very friendly, asked if I needed help. He seemed to genuinely want to help me, so when he asked me if I wanted to ride to the airport, which was very close, he told me, I accepted, grateful to get where I was going. For me at the time, security guard was as good as a cop. I know now that is not the case, but I implicitly trusted him because of his badge and uniform. The first odd feeling I had was the way he threw my suitcase into his trunk, just tossing it in and slamming the trunk. Then I got into his car. It was filthy with cigarette butts and trash strewn throughout. I remember not knowing where to put my feet and had to put them on top of the piles of garbage. Still, he had a picture of a little kid dangling from his rearview mirror, and so I thought, okay, it's not a big deal. He's a good person. We started driving and I have absolutely no idea where he's going, but of course I wouldn't. However, after a while, it's clear that he is not going to the airport, at least not the direct route. I try to stay calm and ask him questions. He asserts that he knows where he's going, that this is the fastest secret way, stuff like that. We ended up in a pretty abandoned business area, a place for freight and other businesses that was either closed or empty. There wasn't a soul in sight, just deserted stretches of road. He begins circling the same streets, retracing where he's already been. At this point, I'm freaking out, but I don't want him to know how scared I am. It's here that I feel like I wake up to the bad position I am in. He had these reflective sunglasses on and was smoking cigarette after cigarette. After a while of me asking where we were and where we were going, he stops talking altogether, refusing to answer me. After a long period of driving in silence, he starts to ask me about my underwear, how long I'd been wearing it, what color it was. After I played along, trying to be cool, I guess, I made up the color they were, saying that my boyfriend wouldn't like this conversation, stuff like that. I tried to placate him, not wanting to make him angry. Then he told me he would give me a hundred dollars just to see my underwear and began to reach over and try to touch me, my knee and thigh. I just told him no, not interested, and he didn't stop trying. At this point I am fully aware of the danger I am in. The only thing I wanted was to be able to get out of the car. I began to think of how bad it would hurt with how fast we were going. I began to tell him that if he just wants to drop me off, I can have someone come get me. I remember trying to make him think that none of this was a big deal, that he could just leave me and that I would be fine. I just wanted to leave the car. I kept trying to remind him that I had a plane to catch and that I was worried I wouldn't make it. Though I imagine I sounded calm, I know that in my fear, I was shaking with everything I said. It's hard to remember how long we drove around in what felt like the middle of nowhere. I was leaning far into my side of the passenger seat, thinking I would just have to jump out if it got bad enough. 
And then, after a final refusal to let him see, touch, or smell my underwear for money, he speeds up and leaves the area we were driving around in. He drives me to the closest train station quickly and pulls into the parking lot. Needless to say, I have never been so happy to see a train station. I quickly get out of his car and make sure people can see me. I can remember thinking that that was important. He gets out, pulls my luggage out of his trunk, throws it out onto the ground, calls me an idiot and speeds off. I did get to the airport and I did make my flight. I didn't tell anyone the story for a long time because I felt so stupid that I had put myself into this now so obviously dangerous situation. I still feel this way, but now I worry that I should have told someone and that maybe he did this to someone else who didn't get so lucky. I have been waiting for my senior trip for years, 10 whole days by myself without my parents and just with friends and the guys from the travel company. I had actually a great time, save for someone that made me really uncomfortable, the security guard. He was the guy in charge of the security in our wing of the hotel. The first time I met with him we chit chatted. He was a nice guy and I'm very outgoing and love talking to people. He told me to guess his age, I guess 45, but he was 30. We laughed and parted ways. Next day I went out clubbing with my friends and had something to drink that my stomach didn't like at all. I went back to the hotel early in the night. Nightclub time in my country is until 6 or 7 in the morning. I went back to the hotel at 2. He saw I wasn't feeling well and offered to accompany me to my room. I said sure. He came with me. We said our goodbyes and parted ways again. Nothing strange. The next day he started acting strange. He asked my age, I told him I was 16, not true, I'm 18, and he didn't believe me so he asked a guy from the travel company who I was friends with who said I was 18. The security guard said, oh, you're legal then, nice. I felt a little creeped out. That night he asked if I was a virgin and I said it was none of his business. On my fourth day there I was waiting for the elevator with some friends and he came. He put his arm around my shoulders and started asking questions if I had a boyfriend and if I was going to be naughty on this trip, that we could do stuff and he wasn't going to kiss and tell. I felt really uncomfortable. After that, he kept blowing me kisses every time he saw me. He also put his hand over his heart and did kissy faces. The second to last day of the trip, I was about to go with some friends when I realized I forgot my phone, so I told them to wait for me. I would retrieve it from my room and be right back. There was no one on the part of the hotel where my room was because everyone was out having fun. Literally zero people. My friends and I were the last ones to go and my friends were downstairs. As I got to that part of the hotel, I heard someone nearby. Outside of my room was the security guard. He was there waiting. I got really creeped out and felt incredibly unsafe. I was totally alone except for him. What was he doing there? I just forgot about my phone and went back downstairs to my friends. I didn't tell them anything, just said that I couldn't find my cell and we went out to have a good time. On the last day of my trip the security guard was sad. He kept telling my friends how he never got to be with me, that he knew he could show me a really good time, that he had waited for me for so long and I let him down. Now I was sad when the trip ended obviously but also relieved because I didn't have to see that creepy guy again. To give a little bit of a backstory on my place of work, the building itself consists of a bunch of small one floor corporate offices. There are probably about 9 or 10 in all, so there are usually a fair amount of people here during the day. On one side, which is where my office is located, there's a small but thick wooded area where if you go to the edge of it, you can see the residential street behind it. Now in the day, it isn't creepy at all, but after about 7 o'clock, the creepiness increases because of the lack of activity in street lights. It looks like a ghost town with the exception of about 6 cars including mine. I guess this plays a big part in my fear considering I am a 25 year old 5 foot 3 female working until 1 in the morning by herself. One seemingly normal day, I went outside to my car during my break to make my way to the nearest fast food place and realized I forgot my phone sitting on the charger under my desk. 
I made my way back inside, and while already inside, I noticed a truck pulling up on the far end of the security cameras we have displayed at the front of the building, and thought, that's weird, who is coming back to work at 9pm, but kind of brushed it off and retrieved my phone. I also stopped for a split second to use the bathroom and talk to my coworker a little bit. When I left out, I looked around and noticed the car was gone and figured maybe someone had just stopped by because they had forgot to do something and left. I got my food and about 20 minutes later pulled back into the parking lot but stayed further down from where my office was located because I still had time to kill. So I noticed the truck parked to the far corner of the lot with no lights on and again thought it was weird because earlier in the day the truck was heading towards the area where I now sat. I saw his headlights flick on and off, starting to drive toward me. I kept my head down and my phone while stealing glances to see where he was going. He pulled up next to me being so close that if I wanted to get out, I would have to really squeeze myself in between the cars. I began to panic and saw that he opened his car door, making the light turn on, allowing me now to see him. I panicked and threw my car in reverse as he started to jog around to my side. I know I shouldn't judge, but... This guy was huge. He was dressed in dark clothing, stood about 6 foot 3 or so, and looked like he could easily weigh about 350 pounds. All I thought of was how easy it would be for him to knock me out, throw me in his even bigger truck without anyone noticing I was in there. He held his hand up as if to tell me to stop, but I was already hauling out of there. The last thing I want to do is talk to some strange man in the parking lot when it's almost 10 o'clock at night. I looked in my rear view and saw that he was making his way back into his car. I freaked out even more at this point. I wasn't too familiar with the area, only the interstate that led into the offices from the highway, so I decided to hurry up and dip into the residential area, figuring it'd be easy to lose him if he were following me. I did so and kept checking to see if he'd followed me, which he didn't. I pulled up my phone after I stopped a couple of blocks away and called my mom to ask what I should do. She didn't answer, and my mind went back to the other female at my job who would be leaving in about 30 minutes. I called her and told her what had happened, and she told me she didn't see anyone, and I was probably overreacting because he didn't get a chance to talk and say what he wanted. She did say, however, that when I come back in, to call her, and she will walk me into the building since I was so scared. While I was on the phone with her, I took the street closest to our building and saw that he was still there just at the other side of the parking lot, waiting behind another car. I agreed, asked her to stay late with me tonight, and just sat there for about 15 minutes trying to rationalize in my head that nothing happened yet, and I was probably overreacting, but I couldn't shake that gut feeling. Eventually I made my way back, and he was gone, to my relief. When I went inside with her, she gave me this horribly produced business card, and said he had left it for me. She said he had banged on the door, but she was hesitant to open it because I had already called her and informed her about him. The doors have slammed locks and cannot be opened from the outside without a pass. She said she opened it slightly and he yanked it open from her, told her he was hired security because kids were breaking bottles in the parking lot while pulling out a business card and that he saw her friend indicating he saw me leave. She said she took it and told him something along the lines of, yeah, she told me she saw you and you should have had a little more manners when dealing with females so late at night, and he said he understood and she waited for him to leave. I was kind of put at ease at this point, but that quickly faded into fear again. The same fear has only grown the more I think of it. Not one time did he see me enter my office or leave and my car wasn't parked directly in the front, so how would he know which one I worked at? It also isn't easy to tell because from outside you can't see which office is open. All of the offices have lobby doors that remain closed with the light on for security camera purposes. Also, if you really were a security guard, why would you leave within 15 minutes? I haven't seen him since this happened and my schedule has not changed so I'm pretty sure I would have ran into him again. We informed my boss the next day that he said he would call the owner of the property and verify that they did in fact hire security. They did, but the company name was completely different from the one left on the business card the guy gave, and they were hired to come on the weekends. This happened in the middle of the week. So although I'm wondering, who was that? I think I'd rather not find out.
So just a bit of background information. My name is Crawford and I'm 19. My girlfriend Lauren and I decided to get a place together in the city. We moved in a couple of weeks after we were searching and there was a security guard there named Phil. Phil was cool at first as he would greet everyone as they walked in, but things took a bit of a turn for the worst and got a little bit sketchy. Me and Lauren have an apartment on the very top that looks over the city and you have the pool and the hot tub at the top of the building. Me and Lauren always got up there around 1 or 2 a.m. just to chill and talk and have little make-out sessions. Phil comes out and says, What are you two doing up here so late? Lauren can pick up vibes of people easily and she felt really uneasy around him. I told him, We just wanted to see the city at night. And Phil says something that still haunts me to this day. He says, Would you guys get freaky in front of me? Lauren says the most funniest thing I've ever heard her say. You know, they have websites for that kind of stuff, so why don't you go watch those and leave us alone? Phil got mad at Lauren and went back into the building. A couple of days later, me and Lauren celebrated our one year and were heading back to the apartment to have a little bit of fun. Right in the middle of it all, Lauren screams bloody murder as she saw Phil in the bathroom doorway touching himself to what we were doing. I called the front desk and they called the police. The police came shortly after and we explained the entire situation to them and thank God he lost his job. We still live in the same apartment, but that was probably the creepiest thing I have ever had happen to me in my entire life. When I first got out of college back in 2002, I worked the overnight shift at Walgreens about a mile from my parents' house. Because it was overnight, we had a security guard. Usually it would only be the same person a few nights in a row. It tended to be people who had other jobs or hadn't slept in several days because of working so much. Then we got a regular security guard. At first he seemed fine, and my supervisor and I liked having the security. Being women working the overnight shift alone on Long Island, it wasn't super dangerous, but enough that it was good to have a third person if one of us was on break. And then things started getting weird. When I would restock shelves, I would notice the security guard just staring at me, not for a minute or two, but once I watched him out of the corner of my eye as I reset and stocked the entire deodorant section, at least 30 minutes, not moving, but just staring. This behavior went on for a few days, but I didn't really say anything about it because he wasn't coming anywhere near me. He would stare from the very end of the aisle. He would also disappear for an hour at a time several times at night. He didn't really talk to me or my boss, which was odd because all of the other security guards had been at least somewhat talkative. At the beginning of a shift, his supervisor came in for some reason and was trying to find him. My boss said that he might be in the back. Apparently his supervisor found him asleep in the break room. While his supervisor was calling the company, the security guard grabbed his phone and got into a fight with him. He then started yelling and basically freaking out. The cops got called and the security guard had to be tackled and carried out of the store by about three cops. In order for this to happen though, my boss had to say to his face that he was no longer allowed in the store. He came back a few days later specifically looking for my boss and I. Thankfully, we were both off for the day. After that, we got pagers for if something happened and the head of the security team came and hung out with us for the few days after the old security guard had come by. I felt much safer with the pagers. I never saw him again, but every night when I would be by myself on the floor, I would eye the door in case he decided to come back. Okay, so this was a few years ago when I had just gotten into security. I was probably 19 to 20 at the time. The position was unarmed and the area wasn't that great. In fact, the property I was posted on was an apartment complex that had about six shootings in the one year period we had a contract with them. My father was, and is, a felon. When he was my age, he was arrested for trafficking drugs in relation to organized crime. The reason I mention this is because his world introduced me to two kinds of people, gang members and tweakers. I'm not trying to act like a tough guy when I say this, but I'm not afraid of gang members. You pretty much get what you give, but with tweakers, you never know what's going to happen. 
Back to my first post, I was walking around the complex parameter, just trying to make it through the night without getting beat when some guy standing in front of an apartment calls me over. The guy was wearing a black leather jacket and had his hands in his pockets, his other hand was holding a cigarette. His hair was pulled back into a really tight ponytail and his eyes were huge, like almost about to pop out of his head. I had a strange feeling about him, something didn't seem right. Hey. What's up? How can I help you? Hey man, uh, do you know Robert? No, can't say that I do. Why? He, he used to party with us. He, he was the security guard. Oh yeah? That's cool, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm posted here now. Cool, brother. Tell Robert I say hey. He put his cigarette in his mouth, not removing his other hand from his pocket, and reached to shake my hand. I was stupid. I was too friendly and I shook his hand. Let me start by saying that in the entire year we had the contract, nobody named Robert ever worked there, and nobody knew this guy. So when I woke up after being nailed in the head with something very hard, it was impossible to find him. The guy didn't take anything. I'm not sure what he was doing or what he wanted, but it just reiterated to me that tweakers are completely unpredictable. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoy these videos and you want to support the channel further, please consider supporting on Patreon, where for a dollar or more a month you'll have early access to all future narrations that are on this channel 24 hours before they go up on YouTube. So that's awesome. And be sure to check out the merch site at shop.spreadshirt.com forward slash let's read. Thanks so much guys, and I'll see you again soon.